Ascendance. The Memories of Herman Kerr. Memory 1782. Imbecile. That's what he calls Professor Blanchard. The imbecile is choosing two students to lead a research assignment in an abandoned farmhouse. Carter knows he's going to be selected. He's the best in the neuroscience program. The best at the Larry. The Larry. It could only be the Larry. The Larry or the Allen. Two institutions with a history of working with the government to push the limits of psychology beyond the code. Not beyond the code. Despite the code. The papers coming out of the Allen amazed him. Captured him. Inspired him. Had he been Canadian, it would have been the Allen. Or what many called Ravenscrag. The experiments they conducted were brilliant, cutting edge, mind shattering. He wishes he were a student in the 50s, studying under Lord Cragg. The nickname Patience gave the genius at Ravenscrag. Lord Cragg returned from the trials with ideas, not cautionary tales. Not disgust like the other bleeding hearts who condemned the doctors who would, anyway, be smuggled into his country and be given the highest positions in government in exchange for their discoveries. Lord Cragg took the experiments he had heard about to the next level, and Carter... Carter hopes to do the same. But not with this professor. Not with Blanchard. Dr. Blanchard. Dr. Bleeding Heart Blanchard. He has no idea what real power is. Real power is freedom. True freedom. Freedom beyond the limits of ethics and morality. Memory 1783. Carter's leading research. Carter's leading the research assignment with another peer. The challenge? Secure the secret word. Through the good doctor, bad doctor interrogation technique put forward by some other bleeding heart imbecile at some other institution. He's bad doctor. Bad doctor with a code. A list of do's and don'ts the imbecile gave him. Very limiting. Too limiting. Self limiting, even. How is he supposed to secure anything with these limits? Surely he realizes how futile the experiment is with this code. Nevertheless, he tries. He shouts at a fellow student sitting across the table from him. Shouts? Big deal. Tell me or I'll... Shout again. The student doesn't take him seriously. He's play-acting fear. It's all make-believe for him. I could smash his skull and yank the secret word out of his substandard, mediocre brain. Memory 1784. Second day and nothing. Carter's frustrated. Really frustrated. At least they're tied up. All seven of them. But it's still not enough. They need to take the interrogation to the next level. Deprive them of food and water? They'll talk. When their cells begin to self-cannibalize? They'll talk. Better yet, he wants to deprive them of sleep. Sleep deprivation. Removes masks. Lowers guards. Makes prisoners talk for the promise of a few minutes of sleep. The seven prisoners stare at him. They know they're safe. He can see it in their eyes. Limits. No one got anywhere respecting limits. He despises his colleague. Good doctor. He'd have the secret by now, had he been working alone and without a code. Memory 1785 Ridiculous Limits Skinner knew better. Put his own kit in some kind of a box for years just to see what it would do. Huxley worked for the Secret Service and wrote Truths as Lies in Brave New World. War of the Worlds was another great test in mass propaganda. The power of radio to induce fear and anxiety in an unsuspecting audience. The power of fear and anxiety to inspire silence and indifference 
and create perfect consumers. Ethics, morality, limits for sheep, not shepherds. Carter feels anxiety like he ever unlike he ever felt as he watches Good Doctor interrogate one of his classmates. He approaches him from behind with a piece of wood. Something he found on the ground. Raises the makeshift club. Before he realizes what he's doing, he pounds the good doctor's head. Pretend fear becomes real fear as his fellow students stare at him in horror. No more good doctor. No more rules. No more limits. Except the limits of his imagination. Memory 1786. Carter ties a student to a chair. Warm blood trips everywhere. He twists pieces of flesh off his face. The sheep look away, but never up. With terrible moans and squirms, he gets a secret word from each and every one of them. New. Reich. Horizons. Fourth. Bird. Kill. His class makes bed to be released. They sob and agonize in their chairs. They plead the experiment is over. You have the words. You win. We're done. Carter smiles. <coughs> He's got a few days. A few more days and a few more experiments to run. Could put his career at risk. But... He's got the good doctor to take the fall. I'll take what I learned from Lord Crag and lobotomize these imbeciles and manipulate. No, not manipulate. Manufacture. Yes, manufacture reality. Memory 1787. Music blares. Eyes are forced open with toothpicks. Carter piggybacks a looping song with an, uh, with an inaudible subliminal frequency to invoke fear, anxiety, and discontent. He experimented with the loop on his parents, always caused a fight between them. He doesn't remember where he got the loop. He first read about the subliminal frequency from advertisers. Advertisers deny subliminal loops. Of course they do. Advertisers deny they use subliminal loops. But they do. They use them, and they work. They must. They must because peace and contentment is our natural disposition. War and discontent needs to be instilled, enforced, manufactured, repeated over and over again until it's the main script in the collective consciousness. Paperclip. Bluebird. MK Ultra, MK Delta, MK Search. They were all necessary. Lord Crag had the right idea. Good instincts. So did the Black Sorcerer and the Dirty Trickster. They inspired all the goodies he brought with them in his bag. Music, drinks, drugs, lots of drugs. For a moment, just a moment, he hesitates. He'll probably go to jail for a long time if he uses his goodies. But, being free, being truly free for a few days is worth a lifetime of imprisonment. But I won't get caught. Good Doctor will. Memory 1788. Carter wonders if he can remother one of these sheep. Remother. He loves the term. He wishes it was his own, but it's not. Shock them with electricity and expose them to endless images of death, chaos, and destruction. Traumatize the brain. Empty it. Lobotomize these subjects to remother them with new personalities. He wonders if he could remother these sheep into wolves. Get them to kill each other. Better yet, turn these good, law-abiding students into serial bombers. He rips the plugs out of a lamp, splits the wires, heals the wire, places the exposed wire into another student's mouth, 
slowly approaches the socket, taking in his terror. Plugs in, plugs it in, screams as he remothers this exemplary student. Putrid smell of burning hair and skin reaches his olfactory receptors. There's another stench. Imbecile soiled himself. Carter laughs. He hasn't been this stimulated in ages. To be free. Ah. To be truly free. Memory 1789. Carter hasn't had this much fun since he first tried to transplant a mouse brain into a rabbit. A week isn't enough. He wishes he had more time. There are new avenues within the mind to explore. Too many avenues. Not enough time. He wishes he had the tools to operate on their brains. There are knives in the kitchen. Good work. Not surgical precision. But. But enough. He's read about a gland in the brain that looks like an eye. A gland that supposedly secretes DMT. A kind of mystical drug. He wonders if he can extract it from a living subject. He wonders what a good dosage of human DMT does to a test subject. Memory 1790. Carter unties a rope. He's going to release Good Doctor. He's pumped him with drugs and programmed him with new thoughts. He believes the other students are Russian spies that need to be executed for national security. He unwraps the rope and places a screwdriver in his hands. He changes his mind, removes the screwdriver, replaces it with a fork, changes his mind again, replaces the fork with a spoon. He's never seen a spoon used to kill a human being. He backs away from Good Doctor, who is lost and confused. Remothered. He says a phrase, the moon is down, confusion becomes clarity, as good doctor stands and approaches the Russian spies with a spoon. Brilliant. Memory 1791. Bleeding heart Blanchard returns to the farmhouse with a group of men Carter's never seen before. They look like government men. He suppresses a smile and tells them Good Doctor got out of hand, took things a degree too far. He barely got out alive. Blanchard tells him to shut up. His tone is different. He doesn't sound like an imbecile. We taped the whole thing. Carter exchanges a look with the men in black suits. He doesn't understand. The imbecile enters and does the unexpected. He stares at the barely breathing student unperturbed, not, no fear, no panic, no emotion, nothing. He grins and mumbles something to himself in German. He turns to Carter with a smile. His smile turns to a grin when the men in black suits handcuff and arrest him. Blanchard whispers, looks like you had your chance to make merry hell and took Cuffs are just for appearances. I... I... I don't understand. Yes, you do. You understand much more than the others. Welcome to MK Awakening.